After Steve Mazzagatti's retirement, Brazilian referee Mario Yamasaki became the latest figure of scorn for MMA fans. Once an influential figure in Brazilian MMA, Yamasaki's hesitancy and questionable decision-making soon left his reputation in tatters. Today, we take a closer look at the man who's been at the heart of some of MMA's worst moments. Welcome to the INC, and these are five of the worst Mario Yamasaki moments. At Fight Night Belém in 2018, Yamasaki was the center of one of the most infamous fights in UFC history. On paper, Valentina Shevchenko's fight with Priscilla Cachoeira was a mismatch. Although Cachoeira entered the fight unbeaten, her wins had come against low-level opponents on the Brazilian regional scene, while Shevchenko was a former title challenger and considered one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. It was clear Cachoeira offered no threat to Shevchenko, getting dominated in the stand-up and showing little defense when the fight went to the ground. Despite this, Yamasaki allowed the fight to go on. And on. And on. Cachoeira suffered over 200 unanswered strikes before submitting to Shevchenko in the second round, with Yamasaki coming under fire by claiming his refusal to stop the fight was to allow Cachoeira the chance to be a warrior. It's safe to say UFC President Dana White was far from impressed. For that idiot to say that he gave her the opportunity to be a warrior? No, no you moron, you're in there to protect her from herself. He, he makes me sick. Cachoeira blew out her knee during the fight, suffering severe ACL and meniscus tears. As a result, Yamasaki was blacklisted by the UFC and hasn't refereed since. After being sidelined for a year due to her injuries, Cachoeira returned to action in 2019, losing her next two fights before finally breaking her UFC duck against Shayna Dobson in Auckland. Now let's go from a fight Yamasaki stopped too late to one which he stopped far too early. In 2017, Kevin Lee took on Michael Chiesa in the main event of Fight Night Oklahoma. The fight was seen as a breakout moment for Lee, whose four-fight winning streak saw him receiving hype as a potential champion. Lee was looking to settle a score with Chiesa after the two came to blows during the pre-fight press conference. An anticipated grappling match played out as expected, with Chiesa threatening submission attempts from the bottom before Lee managed to take Chiesa's back and hold position for the majority of the round. Late in the first, Lee locked Chiesa in a rear naked choke, but despite the Maverick showing little sign of distress, Yamasaki had seen enough. And there it is! Michael Chiesa is no furious! There was no tap! There was no tap! It looked like Mario Yamasaki thought that maybe yep. Chiesa went out, there was no tap! An incensed Chiesa immediately looked to get the fight result overturned, and had some choice words for Yamasaki when he was questioned about the official following the fight. That's JV bullshit. I mean, that guy's too focused on being some kind of playboy in front of the cameras, making his little heart logos. Maybe he should go back and read the fucking rule book. And I'm not trying to sound like a poor sport, but it's really hard to be positive right now when I've, I've been striving for this main event spot. And I get it, and I just get, I just feel like I just got fucking robbed. After the Oklahoma State Athletic Commission upheld the result, Chiesa bounced back with wins in three of his past four fights. A victory over Rafael Dos Anjos earlier this year has placed him in the conversation for a potential welterweight title shot. Yamasaki's bloodlust once caused a fighter to win a match twice. At UFC 70, Victor Valamaki made his company return against Italian veteran Alessio Sakara. The fight's pivotal moment came two minutes into the first, when Sakara rocked Valamaki with a short right, forcing his opponent to turn his back and Yamasaki to seemingly wave off the fight. At least that's what we thought. Let's see, no, you know there's a what quick time out call. Time out? Well, that's bizarre, that was the end of the fight. In reality, Yamasaki had called a timeout due to Valamaki losing his mouthpiece, leaving both fighters as well as MMA media scratching their heads. The fight was quickly restarted, where dazed Valamaki offered little resistance before being officially stopped 10 seconds later. Yamasaki's indecisiveness was further displayed when Cody Garbrandt took on Augusto Mendez at Fight Night Pittsburgh. Yamasaki appeared to stop the fight after Garbrandt dropped Mendez late in the first, only to have a change of heart and allow the Brazilian to take further shots before finally waving the match off. 
In 2012, Eric Silva was one of MMA's biggest prospects. Silva entered the UFC with a 12-1 record, competing for the Jungle Fight promotion in Brazil, and immediately caught the eye of fans and matchmakers with a 40-second knockout of Luis Ramos in his Octagon debut. Hopes were high Silva could repeat that stellar performance when he took on Carlo Prater at UFC 142. And early in the first round, the Brazilian crowd seemingly got their wish. Oh my, is he quick? Look at this, it's going to be it's it. all That's over. It. it is all over, just like that. A second straight finish within a minute catapulted Eric Silva into the limelight and a potential welterweight champion. At least that's what should have happened until Yamasaki intervened. According to Mario Yamasaki, Mario Yamasaki has said that it is going to be ruled a no contest or he's going to be disqualified because of illegal blows to the back of the head. Yamasaki's ruling sparked uproar from the notoriously tough Brazilian crowd and leading commentator Joe Rogan to question the official over his decision. He goes down and there's one to the side, that's legal. That's legal. Is this a, a, a judgment call? Are you happy with this call? Are you, are you right now, how are you feeling about this? Well, you know, this, I have to decide here right now. I understand, you have to decide in the moment. Yeah. But right now, how do you feel about it, looking at that replay? Fans and critics were split on Rogan's confrontation, with some feeling it was an appropriate line of questioning, and others believing the commentator was unprofessional to call out Yamasaki's mistake. Prater would fight twice more in the UFC before being released by the promotion later that year. And although Silva enjoyed flashes of success, he never reached the superstar level hoisted on him before the Prater fight. One of Yamasaki's worst moments accidentally created one of the sport's best. At UFC 52, Matt Hughes defended his welterweight title against longtime rival Frank Trigg. Months of bickering and trash talking led into the highly anticipated fight, with Trigg looking for revenge after being submitted by Hughes 18 months earlier. The most meaningful strike came early in the first, when Trigg landed a clear groin strike that was obvious to everyone at the Mandalay Bay. Except Yamasaki, of course. He got hit in the groin, looked to referee Mario Yamasaki, Mario Yamasaki didn't stop it, Frank Trigg took advantage of it. Trigg used the referee's mishap to dominate the next few minutes, before locking in a rear naked choke, seemingly to claim vengeance on his rival. Hughes, however, survived the hold. With his opponent gassed from attempting to finish the fight, he mounted a dramatic comeback to retain his title late in the round. Trigg would become an MMA official himself after retiring from the sport in 2011, and would ironically be one of Yamasaki's biggest defenders in the aftermath of Shevchenko Cachoeira. UFC President Dana White has described Hughes Trigg II as his all-time favorite match, a rare example where a man's incompetence ultimately proved beneficial. Hey. Maybe he should pursue a career in politics. And now, time for a few honorable mentions. Yamasaki was so distracted by Derek Lewis's Instagram, he forgot to see him finishing Travis Brown at Fight Night Halifax. Letting Shogun Hua be a warrior in his 2014 loss to Ovin St. Pru. Yamasaki's incompetence even made it into the UFC game. This is the INC. Support the channel on Patreon.